Now it's been a year since I've had this nice telescope and I believe the time has come now to share my experiences with it. Well, what you see here is an 8-inch Dobsonian and is the single most recommended telescope in the world. And you know, when amateur astronomers agree on something, you can rest assured that there is some quality to be found here. It doesn't happen too often. Some people will say that the biggest problem of Dobsonian telescopes is their weight, especially the 8 and if you go further. For me personally, the weight is just enough for one simple reason. I can just do this, pick it up, and carry it away. We are not finished yet. Now we will have a look at some of the details that this telescope has to offer. Let's do it. Now the most important thing of any reflecting telescope is the primary mirror. In this case, we have a parabolic mirror made of borosilicate glass, 94% reflectivity coatings. The only thing you need to remember is parabolic is good, spherical is bad. If you do happen to buy a spherical mirror, at least you can stare at yourself and admire your own brilliance. It is also great that the mirror has a spot in the center, making precise collimation possible. Just do not use it for target shooting practice, right? The focal ratio of the telescope is 6, which means it can handle budget-friendly eyepieces and is easier on collimation. The next important part is the focuser. It comes with a metal 2-inch Crayford-style focuser with a 1.25-inch adapter, which means you will be able to use 99% of eyepieces on the market for telescopes. The finder itself, to be honest, is nothing to write home about. It's a standard optical finder, 9x50, it is not right angled, so I'm not using it too much now that I have made some upgrades. It is basically a small refractor telescope, so maybe you can just give it to your kids to play with it. Or maybe not, it depends what you think about uh, kids handling expensive optical equipment, right? Now what you see here does not come with this telescope, but I highly recommend it as an upgrade. It is a combo of a red dot finder and a green laser, and it helps really, really a lot about that initial finding of things in the sky and initial pointing. What you see here now is an example of how the laser works during the night. All you have to do is point it in the right direction and immediately you will see it in your eyepiece. Now the red dot finder, or in this case green dot finder, it has also a red color, simply points in the right direction and again, wherever it is pointing, you will see the same view in your eyepiece. Another great upgrade for about $10 is this inclinometer. You simply attach it to the telescope and it will tell you exactly the elevation that the telescope is pointed at. This helps a lot with finding objects that are hard to find in the finder. Another great thing about this model, it has tangent handles. It means once you turn it, it locks the telescope into place where elevation is concerned. This is also a nice thing, you can put your eyepieces here when you're not using them. And now, let's have a look at what you can actually see with the telescope during the night and the day. What you're seeing here has been captured with a dedicated astronomical camera and is very similar to what you will be able to see with your eyes directly through the telescope. You will notice the image drifting. This is caused by the rotation of the planet. This is the moon at about 200 magnification. If we use Barlow, we can easily go also to 400 magnification and that is just about the maximum that you will be able to get out of this telescope. And here we have the planets. First one we are looking at, this is Jupiter on a very good night. And this is Saturn. Saturn is twice as far than Jupiter and it is a little bit smaller in the eyepiece. You can of course also observe the Sun, but you will need a white light filter. Never point the telescope directly at the Sun without a filter. Unless, of course, you're planning to set your eyes on fire. 
And of course, with some image processing, you can achieve really quite nice results even with a cheap camera. Now this covers the solar system, but the main benefit of buying a Newtonian Dobson is the ability to observe thousands of other objects in our galaxy and beyond. The most amazing list of deep space objects is the Messier catalog. Of course, you're going to need a pretty good sky, I would say around Bortle 3, 4 or maybe 5 for some of the brighter objects. Now that you know what you can see, let's cover some of the equipment you will need to fully utilize this telescope. If you have watched the unboxing video, you will realize that with the telescope you get only these two eyepieces. One 25mm and another 10mm. With these two eyepieces you will achieve only two magnification. 120 and with the bigger one around 50. Now the objects in the sky, they come in all kinds of shapes and sizes. Ideally you would want to be able to achieve magnifications from 30 all the way to 400 and maybe a little bit higher. I will not cover in detail all of this equipment, but I will cover in high level of what I have done in order to achieve the potential that this telescope has to offer. First thing and most important one is different eyepieces. Here on the left, these are called Barlow's, Barlow 2 and Barlow 3. What this does, it basically multiplies the magnification of any given small eyepiece by 2 or by 3. Now, if I want to look at the moon the way it was captured 200, then I will need a 6mm eyepiece. These are called red lines and they are wide field, about 68 field of view. Now this one is a special one and it's called the zoom eyepiece and it does exactly as it says. You turn this knob and it zooms in and out just like a regular zoom on anything else. Next we have collimating tools. We have a laser collimator and a manual Cheshire tool. You can use ideally both in order to properly collimate the telescope. The Cheshire helps with the secondary and the laser helps to quickly align the primary mirror. On the right here, what you see are filters. We have a polarizing filter to reduce the intensity of the light on any given object. This is usually used on the Moon or maybe Jupiter to see some details. Then we have the contrast filters which cut the light in specific wavelengths so that you can see the nebulas which emit those specific wavelengths of light. And here is a special small one that's an ultraviolet infrared cut filter which is used especially for imaging. Our eyes cannot see these wavelengths but a camera can, so that's why we use it. Now if you want to look at big objects like the Pleiades, with this telescope you will need very low magnifications like 30, 40, 50 and for this you will need 2 inch eyepieces. As you can see from the get-go, these are quite big, that's why they're called 2 inch, <laughs> and they are quite amazing. The field of view of these is 70. This one, for example, is 26 mm. If you may remember, the telescope came with a 25 mm. So why would I buy another one if I already have the 25 mm? Now the main reason is field of view. With this one, I can see more of the sky at pretty much the same magnification. Let me show you in Stellarium the difference between 26 and 25 under different fields of view. As you can see, you can see a lot more of the sky with the big one. If you want to go even lower, then it might be a good idea to get some binoculars. These go from 8 to 16. Or you can get this nice spotting scope, which goes from 25 to 75. It has an aperture of 100 millimeters, so in this case it's quite nice. It can gather uh, four times less light than the Dobsonian, but it has only half the resolution. The great thing about this thing, it weighs just 1.2 kilos. You can take it with you on vacation, unlike this one, which weighs around 30 kilograms. And the last thing you will need is a nice eye patch. It's a lot easier to look at the telescope if you don't close one of your eyes. Now the very last thing is 
something which is quite optional. It's a small Astro camera. The way this works, it is basically an eyepiece. You put it right into the focuser, right here. You plug it into an USB cable and off you go. The one that I have is full HD, but I had just ordered a 4K camera for about $50. So I'm looking forward to making some new pictures in a, a little bit higher resolution. And we mentioned also the sun. You can look at the sun with this special white light filter. It is very important that it goes to the entire aperture. Basically, you take it and you put it here and you look at the sun. Because this way you get the entire resolution of the telescope. So you can achieve some really nice close-ups of the sunspots. And I'll show you an example here. Now everything that you see here has been bought on AliExpress. <laughs> So I really recommend it as a nice shopping experience. You can get everything at budget prices. Maybe sometime in the future, I will invest into a little bit better eyepieces and stuff like that, but unlikely. If I do invest into this hobby again, it will be into a bigger telescope. I do recommend the 12 inch Dobsonian, again from Skywatcher, the flex tube, that one looks like a real winner. Next time, sometime in the future, I will be focusing more on some of this equipment, going into more detail about what you can expect from these eyepieces, especially the big ones are quite interesting. Might be also interesting to have a look at the spotting scope and the binoculars, because again, some of these uh, objects, they are quite big and they are best actually observed uh, with a pair of binoculars instead of a telescope. That's all for now. Have a great day wherever you are and see you under the stars. Good night.